welcome everyone to this uh, webinar. Uh, so what's uh, what investors are look for? It's uh, the second time that I give uh, this uh, webinar. So I hope uh, you will find it uh, helpful. And as uh, mentioned, so if you have questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A uh, section and uh, I will be happy to answer at the end of my presentation. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so actually, uh, why, uh, and uh, it was already mentioned, but why, let's say, I, I have some, uh, I'm somehow legitimate to uh, tell you about fundraising is because I'm uh, mostly a serial entrepreneur. I founded or co-founded different companies. In total, uh, uh, I, I raised uh, more than 150 million uh, in uh, equity, uh, debt, uh, uh, and uh, other, let's say, instruments. Um, one of the company we uh, we 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 achieved the milestone of 100 million turnover with 200 people, and as of today, I'm involved with a company based in Luxembourg, which is called Man Electric, which is both in the energy and space sector. Um, I'm mentor and coach in different programs. Uh, I'm also a business angel, part of uh, the Luxembourg Business Angel Network of the uh, space uh, section of uh, European Business Angel Network. I also co-founded the Luxembourg Space Tech Angels. And uh, I'm uh, a techie a guy, so I'm also part of uh, Singularity University Abundance 360 program. Okay, so that's, uh, that's about me. So now, um, when you meet an investor uh, for the first time, what's important is, in my opinion, that you have some clear purpose that, that you know exactly what you uh, why you are doing uh, what you do so what's your purpose of your venture and saying this one framework which is very interesting is the one used by singularity university which is called mtp or massive transformative purpose so investors they like when you have uh, a massive, let's say, uh, goal. So when you think big, uh, when you have really some audacious goal, this is always something which is uh, able to really uh, uh, attract investors. Also, try to have something which is really transformative. So how can you really uh, transform an industry or community or even uh, why not transform the planet and, re and create a real impact. I think this, this clearly are the kind of projects that uh, investors uh, look for. And finally, an investor will, will try to understand why you do things. So what's your purpose? Why gets you off the bed every morning? What's your why? Uh, and this is very important because I'm a strong believer that to succeed in the 21st century, you need to be purposeful and profit will follow, but you need to have a clear purpose. And uh, more and more what we see with millennials and the new generation is that they will follow you as uh, maybe employees of your venture if you can really inspire them and they have a clear purpose. So think about this and try to find what is your MTP because uh, an investor, maybe they will not call it MTP, but they will try to understand really what's your purpose and why you do things. They want to know exactly this. And then what's your moonshot, which is, let's say, a part of your MTP. And the moonshot is composed of uh, three uh, ish, uh, things. The first one, you want to tackle a huge problem. So try to explain clearly what's the problem and uh, why this problem is important and how you are going to solve this problem. And never forget that uh, uh, the biggest uh, world's problem are the world's biggest opportunities for entrepreneurs. And also, as uh, Peter Diamandis said, always says is that if you want to be a billionaire, try to serve 1 billion people. So 
uh, as big the problem is, uh, as big generally the opportunity is. Now, how are you going to solve this problem? Can you really have a breakthrough technology? Something that really uh, is different from what is done today. Sometimes it's not only uh, the technology, it can be also a new business model, which is really disruptive. So uh, now the best projects are probably the ones that uh, combine uh, breakthrough technology with breakthrough business model. Uh, then, like if you look, for example, at uh, Uber, I think they have a strong technology, but they have also they came with a strong business model. So when you have this perfect combination, uh, yeah, you you are probably uh, quite attractive for investors. And then you need a radical solution. So you need a different way also to do things. Uh, and, and this is a part of uh, how you are going to execute uh, the, your plan. Uh, and normally investor will also look at, uh, at this. So what is your go-to-market strategy? What is your, uh, your distribution strategy? Uh, how are you going really? Uh, what's your master plan? What are your different milestones over time? Uh, these are all questions that an investor uh, will uh, look uh, for. So what is the challenge actually? The real challenge <clears throat> for an entrepreneur is to create value. So an investor would like to understand how you are going to create value, then how you are going to capture this value and how you are going to deliver this value. And I always uh, talk about the three T's. Uh, the first T is the technology. So the technology allow you how to create the value. So it's linked to your value proposition. You have a problem, you come with a breakthrough technology and you solve a big problem. Now, that's fine. But if you have only the technology, it's not enough. What you need is uh, to have a traction, so to have a market which is big enough in order to capture that value. Now, you can have the best technology and you can have a big market, but you, if you don't have the right team to deliver the, this value, uh, you will fail anyway. So it's why an investor will look at what I'll call the three T's, technology, traction, and team. And there is also a fourth T, which is the, the time to market. And this is something that uh, most of the time many people forget about, but this is paramount. Because if you are too early, that's probably fine if you have enough cash. But the risk is that you are going to burn a lot of money before the market is mature enough. If you are too late, yeah, you understand it's too late. Uh, the market is already over. Maybe you could. Uh, uh, sell a fraction of the the market potential, but the the big part has, was already sold. So you are just too late. So think about the treaties, but don't forget the fourth one, which is the time to market. So this is here some questions that you can uh, let's say uh, think about these uh, treaties, but uh, I, I just mentioned about them. Now, one, th one thing which is important about investors is that your expectations and the investor expectations may be different. So there is, the, not always, but you may face a mismatch between your expectation or the investor expectation and your reality. What I mean is that your reality most of the time and the reality of an entrepreneur is very complex. You face, you need to recruit people. You need to build a team. You face, let's say, people management issues. You need to have enough cash to survive. You need to sell. You need to market. So you, you have a lot, a lot of challenges. For the investor, his expectation are a bit easier and simple because what an investor wants, he wants to put money 
he, he has some level of trust in you and what he expects is that you are going to really succeed and you can at the end in uh, three, five, seven years, 10 years, you can return him some multiple on his investment. It's basically what an investor wants. Now, some investors, and I will explain this a bit later, for example, like business angels, they have an interest which is not only money because they want also to maybe help you and to bring their experience to you. Uh, VCs are also doing this because they have a huge network, so they can also help, the, help you with their network, etc. But ultimately, don't forget that investor at the end, uh, what they want, even if they like you, they like the project. You know, I don't know any investor that uh, they like to fail and to and to lose money. So at the end, what they want is to multiply their money. Your reality, of course, it's also what you want. But I mean, your reality is also a bit more complex because you want to build a company, you want to build a team, etc. And so you need to try to understand exactly what the investor is looking for. So try to speak with the investors and ask initially, what are you looking for by investing in my company? Ask the question. So you understand exactly what are his or her expectations. Like, you know, this, this joke, if an investor comes, let's say, let's assume uh, I'm, uh, let's say, I'm having cause, and some investor is coming and ask me, I would like fat-free milk. Okay, I can say, okay, that's a great expectation, but uh, uh, how can I do it? So I think the proper answer to this is to say, look, uh, that's a, a good uh, request, but as of today, uh, like this, I'm not able. Now, if I build a plant, maybe I can process milk and I can provide you a fat-free milk. So try to always argument, let's say, your replies so that you can at some point match uh, the investor expectation, but with some argumentation. Don't, don't, don't try to oversimplify, I mean. And these are some of the, of the investor expectation. So they are looking that you have not only a, a well tough business ID, but also a good plan <clears throat> that you have some organization in place. They expect some integrity from you. Uh, they uh, expect that you answer to their questions. It's why, for example, a good advice that I always give to uh, the startup that I'm coaching every month just uh, send a one sheet summary or report of the situation of, of, the, of your company. For example, what are the green flag of the month? What are the red flags of the month? Uh, what is the situation, the cash situation? What is the situation regarding sales and marketing? What is the situation regarding uh, the product development? What is the situation regarding uh, uh, the the team, uh, the human resources, etc. And if the investor receives this every month, they know what's happening in the company, because it's very frustrating. I, I have the case as a business angel. I invested in a company, and I never uh, hear about the company. Only when there is a general assembly, uh, I just receive. Uh, let's say the notification that I must attend the General Assembly. And during one year, I don't know exactly what's happening in the company. That's very bad. So try to avoid this by providing every month. If, if you think that every month is too much, you can do every two months or at minimum every quarter. But I think every month to send to all your investors a one sheet uh, report, I think is not too much. The investor, maybe also they want to know about uh, the market potential, uh, about uh, what are your plans, for example, for the additional uh, funding runs. Uh, they, 
they want to see that you can take their advices, that you are coachable, uh, that you listen. Uh, and again, with uh, this uh, company, what I said many things, you know, to the founder, but he doesn't want to listen, you know. He doesn't want to do everything by his own, and he is making a lot of mistakes. So be, be like sponges. Try to... Uh, listen to what experienced people are saying to you and maybe you are maybe not everything is true so don't follow everything but i probably most of the time there are good advices and and it's the way for you to learn and to improve and to really be better and this should contribute to your success um also uh, they need to understand that you have some passion for your product or your service. Uh, yeah. So these are some of the expectations that you can face with uh, the investors. Sorry. Uh, also, what an investor uh, uh, looks for is what are your qualities as, a f as your leadership qualities as a founder? You know, a leader is someone who show up every day, is someone giving the example, and mainly that is acting. So be a doer more than a thinker. And your role as a founder and CEO is mainly to manage the team, but not just, you know, to give your instructions, but do the job and lead the team, show the example, create a strong culture. Because at the end, you know, your team is one of your most valuable assets. So if they see that you are a true leader, I think they will trust uh, that at least uh, you are creating something and they, tr they will trust you. So some of the qualities that they expect to see in you uh, and they will judge you the first time that they meet you, are you an honest per person? Do you have an ability to delegate uh, on your teammates? Do you communicate well? And for example, they will see this directly when you pitch. So do rehearsal, rehearsal, rehearsals to pitch. Be comfortable to pitch. If you have a team of founders and if, uh, let's say, the CEO is not the perfect communicator, maybe you have one of your uh, uh, co-founders uh, co that is maybe more comfortable to speak in public. So maybe you should make the presentation. It's not always the CEO to make the presentation. If the CEO is not a good communicator, maybe the, the CEO, the CFO, or maybe someone else from the team, maybe this guy is a perfect communicator and should be the guy making, let's say, uh, the presentation. And you can be uh, with him to answer some questions, but at least uh, uh, you can give a first good impression. As a founder, you must have also a great amount of confidence. Be always optimistic. You must be fully convinced that you are going to succeed. You must have ambitions. Uh, you must be audacious. Uh, and you know that you know to build a company is a roller coaster. So you will have downs, you will have ups, but at the end, you know that you will succeed. And they must be sure that you will you have this level of confidence and that you will not give up after the first the first failure. Because you know they put their money into the company. And mainly if they invest, is because they invest on your head. They need to see also that you are fully committed. So do you want to really spend 100%, 200% of your time on this venture? Positive attitude, optimism, I already mentioned this. Are you a creative person? Can you, when a problem uh, occurs, can you come with some creative solutions? So thinking out of the box not always uh, seeing the problem from one angle, but from other angles. It's also what your team members 
will will expect from you and can you have a good intuition and gut feeling to sense the market to sense the mega trends and to see exactly how to navigate you know the world today is very chaotic is going very fast and what is expected from CEOs and from uh, entrepreneurs is that they can navigate in this chaos and using partially of course the data but also using uh, their gut feeling and of course what they expect also is that you can inspire because at the end you will need to inspire not only them the investors but you will need to inspire your team members you will need to inspire your, the clients the partners etc so at some point you need to be charismatic uh, many people think that uh, charism uh, is uh, something that we have or we don't have it's true that some people have uh, more uh, let's say abilities to to be uh, charismatic but you can also learn charism and um, I encourage you to read a very good book, which is called The uh, Charism Myth, uh, which is uh, wrote by uh, Olivia uh, Fox Cabana. And uh, I really encourage you to read this book because you, you will learn techniques to improve your charism. Yeah, and the last one, you must be approachable. I think that's uh, pretty obvious. So, when you will meet on uh, investors, be prepared to be asked a lot of questions. I think if the investor really do well his due diligence, he will ask you a lot, a lot of questions. And these are some questions that they can ask. So uh, what are your key different differential points with the competitors? Uh, when you will be break even, or you are going to use the money that they give you, uh, the terms, for example, of the deal, uh, if you have a management team, what's your burn rate? Uh, they, they will ask questions, of course, about your business models, if you have some IP uh, protection. Um, what's your exit strategy? Uh, what you expect during the exit, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, really, uh, be prepared to answer a lot of questions. Now, how are you going to answer these questions? How can you be prepared? You you can be prepared if you really work on your business plan. I mean, you must know your technology. You must know your business model you must know your market you must know your figures you must be a master of your, really your business so some advisors can help you maybe sometimes you will have uh, you will be part of an incubator and maybe uh, in the incubation uh, you can find some people to help you but at the end you must do it yourself so do your business and financial plan yourself if you just take one advice from today is this one do it yourself because when you do it yourself you will you will have to answer a lot of questions and if you are able to answer these questions when the investor will ask you you will be prepared you will already know uh, the answers if when an investor asks you some uh, questions and you are not able to answer, don't try to bullshit, etc. but say, look, uh, that's a good question. I don't have the answer right now. I will ask my team and I will come back to you. Be honest. I think, again, honesty is really appreciated by investors. Now, a few things to remember which are important about uh, angel investors keep in mind that an angel investor uh, invests his money so generally you know angel investors are a former executive of corporation or former entrepreneurs they got some exit so they have some money they they can in, maybe they invested uh, some money in real estate or some uh, 
other uh, asset classes and probably yeah because they like startup they like technology they like entrepreneurship they want to help entrepreneurs and to give back somehow so they will invest and you know sometimes some angels invest uh, from 10k but some invest one 100 150k so uh, compared, let's say, to uh, their uh, net worth, it can be anyway some significant, let's say, amount of money. That, and so uh, this is very different from a venture capitalist because a venture capitalist, they don't invest their own money. They invest money which are uh, invested by what is called the limited partners. Uh, so it's, uh, let's say, professional uh, investor, institutional investors that put their money into a fund and then the general partners of the fund, uh, which are the venture capitalists, the VCs, they will invest this money. And generally they invest during a period of uh, three to four years. The fund has a lifetime of about 10 years. And the challenge of a fund is uh, to try to always uh, find the companies that can become, let's say, unicorns past the 1 billion, let's say, uh, valuation in an ideal case, so that they can more or less recover, let's say, the losses. Why? Because generally 50% of uh, the companies in a fund will fail, 25 will be more or less uh, okay, so they will just return their the investment. So they need to bet on the last 25 person. And so it's why, it's why they are very selective. Uh, and for them, it's very important that they return something to the limited partners if they want to create another fund after. If they want to raise another fund, they need to have some track record. The business angel, he invests his money he wants also some return, but uh, the business angel is also looking at some other things like giving back, helping, uh, maybe uh, be, be involved uh, with a new venture, uh, maybe help uh, in the advisory board, something like this. So they have, the motivations are quite different between business angels and VCs. Also, a business angel has a limited uh, capacity. And generally, they are probably less passionate uh, business angels. So sometimes they can exit when a VC, for example, is entering at another round. They might, uh, some VCs, they buy back some shares from business angels. And for the business angels, it can be a cash out uh, opportunity. Also, Again, you must know your maths. And for example, you must know what reasonable return you can offer in the short term. And for example, I give here some examples. If you want to give a, ten, a 2x after two years, it means that you offer to the, uh, to the investor a 41% internal rate of return. But a 2x after five years is only 15% internal rate of return. Uh, so you see the differences. So when, when you say, okay, you are going to double your money. Yes, but in which time frame? Because in two years, it's not the same than five years. Again, if you say you are going to make uh, five times your money in what uh, time frame? If it's in on four years, this means that you offer 50% internal rate of return, which is, of course, very good when you see today in different other uh, investment uh, uh, classes. Uh, of course, 50% is a lot. And again, know your maths, because uh, I think that's can be a strong point to convince an investor because the investor normally, he knows. He knows what he is uh, expecting. So again, my, my advice is really that you try to master these kind of things. Um, 
and try to have among your funding team, maybe a guy with, which is very comfortable with numbers, like a kind of CFO, then can really help you into these matters. So the last thing I want to give you as an advice is be brave, don't give up, and have the grit. And let me give you the example of Bill Gates. And what Bill Gates says is, there is no secret. I simply show the plan to 1,200 people. 900 said no, and only 300 signed up. Out of these 300, only 85 did anything at all. And out of those 25, only 35 were serious. And out of those 35, 11 made me a multimillionaire. So coming from 1,200 people that he met, uh, finally, only 11 uh, did some things, which is about one person. So be prepared. So when you fundraise, you, you, you will need to meet a lot of investors. And most of the time, most of them, they will say no. But you must be perseverant. You must continue. Because ultimately, uh, you will find some people that like what you do, that like your personality, and they will bet on you. So what I wish you is really uh, to don't give up, uh, to be bold, uh, to be brave. And I'm sure that if you do this and that you follow some of uh, the advices that uh, Humbly, I, tr I try to give you uh, today. Uh, I hope you will be successful. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot for this, uh, Fabrice. I think the floor is open for questions and also answers. Um, you have the Q&A button, as you can see everyone, uh, on the bottom of your screen or on the top of your screen, depending on which version of Zoom you're using. Uh, in there, you can type any question you, you might have. Um, for the next for the next minutes. Meanwhile, uh, some people had questions. Uh, a first one is the following, uh, Fabrice. Um, yes. Which metrics should be shown in the financial planning? Yeah, it's uh, it's a good question, and uh, thank you for asking this. Um, look, I think uh, I think the 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 metrics you know for a startup. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, the, the usual, let's say, metrics of, uh, let's say, corporate finance uh, doesn't, do not make a lot of sense, I mean, uh, for startups. It depends in which business you are. But if you are, for example, in the business of uh, platforms and such kind of things, uh, generally what is very appreciated is uh, lifetime customer value, um, also, the cost, uh, the cost of customer acquisition. I think these are uh, metrics which are very interesting. As I always say, uh, in each business, try to see what is your, uh, your key metric. The one that you need to track uh, maniacally and that you know that if this metric is growing, all the business is growing. And generally, there, there is on one like this. So probably you can have a few metrics, let's say, related to uh, uh, customer uh, acquisition, uh, customer conversion, so sales conversion, sales acquisition, and such kind of things. And maybe one uh, which is really uh, key in the business that you are. You know, sometimes it can be uh, the number of units that you sell. Sometimes it's uh, uh, a number, let's say, of um, uh, the time, for example, to convert the sales or something like this. So it really depends from, uh, from one business to the other. Uh, and also what is important is... Uh, also what is important is... Um, for example, to know what will be your, uh, your sales in five years uh, or your EBITDA in five years, because generally the valuation will be calculated based on this value. So it's uh, 
most of the time uh, try to have an idea of, of how you are going to calculate the valuation. You can use the venture method, you can use the discounted cash flow method. Uh, there are different methods to calculate the valuation. Uh, and generally, this is based either on the multiple of uh, the, uh, the sales, the turnover in uh, five years or uh, the EBITDA in uh, five years. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, next question from the same person from Svarajit is, how detailed should the financial plan be in terms of granularity of sales costs, material costs, and so forth? Yeah, again, it depends about the business because uh, sometimes if you have a business with a high seasonality, uh, maybe to have, uh, let's say, uh, monthly uh, detail is important or quarterly details. Sometimes just, uh, let's say, annual uh, is enough. Now, in terms of the granularity of the sales, etc., I would say as a general rule of thumb that the more detail you have, uh, the better is. Why? Because it forces you to go into the detail. And now you are not obliged to show all the details because uh, generally, for example, in the pitch deck, what I recommend is just to show a couple of lines. So the top revenues, um, the EBITDA, uh, and uh, for example, the number of employees and the cash position. I think that's enough for a pitch deck. But then the investor maybe will ask you your financial plan and then maybe he can, let's say, a bit dive into your financial plan and see, let's say, the, the details, etc. For example, uh, uh, what are, what's, uh, what, how much are the salaries, for example? This is something that they want to know. If you, you are not going, let's say, with their money, pay you, let's say, very huge salaries. Uh, it, are there, let's say, some important costs that maybe uh, you could reduce, etc. So if you give a lot of details, uh, it forces you, again, as I said, it forces you to really see uh, if there are not things that maybe you can improve or not. And it, of course, you open the doors also to the investors that maybe he will find something that uh, maybe uh, there is an issue, etc. So I think um, initially I will show the minimum and then if the investor really is interested and make his due diligence, then try to give more details. Excellent, that answers that question. Um, are there any more questions by the participants? The floor is all yours. Yeah, if people don't type in, uh, they can also ask, probably they can speak, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. If, you, if you'd like to speak, feel free to raise your hand and I'll, I'll give you the floor. Don't be shy, otherwise, uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> otherwise, you have my contact details, I think, on the slides. So uh, if, uh, if you are more comfortable, let's say, just to... Uh, uh, to send uh, a message, uh, feel free to send me uh, a mail or uh, or contact me. Uh, I would be happy to to answer to your questions. Much appreciated. But I think the lack of questions actually uh, indicates uh, the, the completeness of your presentation. Uh, I hope could so. Be a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> could be a good sign. Uh, at the same time, uh, after after one year of of being accelerated, maybe uh, some people here. Uh, have a feeling of good confidence to go ahead and, and are, are fully ready for the market with this last prep talk from your side. Um, to, to round things up, and unless there are any last questions, do you have a final uh, tip to give Fabrice? Uh, something that people should carry with them for the rest of their lives? Well, I think uh, regarding, let's say, uh, you know, investors, uh, fundraising, etc. Um, first of all, if you don't need investors, uh, that's the best. I mean, if you can finance your business just with customers, just by selling, uh, why not? I think that's not mandatory, I mean, to raise money. It's true that there is a hype now in startup, okay, uh, people have just an idea and uh, just uh, we are going to raise uh, millions. 
okay, that's fine. But uh, I think uh, it's probably better also to build a business to to sell. Uh, and really, uh, if you cannot, let's say, finance your growth yourself, then you need a partner. And this partner can be a professional investor. Maybe this partner can be an industrial partner. So some company that uh, really is complementary to what you do. Um, but I would say having also an investor on board also is a constraint. So I mean, I'm not saying that you don't need investors. I think investors are really helping uh, startups and probably that 90% uh, of the startup will not be uh, here if they don't have, uh, let's say, investors. But uh, try to see when is the right time to get the investor on board. So I see two... Uh, to um, uh, very frequently, I mean, I see startup that they just launch their ID and they directly they want to raise money. No, I think it's not really working like this. I think you need to build something at least to have a very good ID, to have uh, your uh, value proposition, which is validated. Uh, that you know that there is a real market, etc. You have a clear plan, a clear roadmap. And then you say, okay, based on this, I know that uh, I'm not going to do, to do it uh, myself because maybe the sales I need uh, uh, one, two years before to have enough sales and enough cash to, uh, uh, to reinvest into my business. So the market is there. I don't want to lose, let's say, again, time to market is important. So I need some external help. And it's why I'm going to ask some investor to help me. That's the way I think you should approach, let's say, investors. But you are not, you are creating a, what my, my conclusion is you are creating a business uh, to create something. You are not creating a business to raise money. And I see uh, very often, let's say, people that uh, they just create a, a venture to raise money. No, that's not the goal. Raising the money is just an external resource. But uh, most, what is important is to create and to build a business. So think first to build your business. And then if you need help, investors are there to help you. I, I think that's that's wonderful advice. And I... I love your perspective on this, uh, Fabrice, personally. So that's much appreciated. I will take it with me. <laughs> uh, no, really, I think um, um, uh, this is a very, very interesting uh, way to conclude things. So thanks a lot for that. Uh, You're welcome. Uh, Pleasure. Thank you. There are no further questions, I think. Um, that's fine. So that's, I think that's just fine. I would wish everyone an excellent uh, extended weekend. Uh, thank you very much for being here. As Fabrice mentioned, if you have any more questions, you can uh, contact him. If I'm correct, <laughs> I won't yes, uh, say yes, this yes, on behalf sure. of you. Uh, otherwise, you can always contact the Accelerator team and we'll be glad to connect you uh, with him. The webinar will be recorded and uh, broadcasted also on YouTube. So if you would like to have a look again at what was presented, that is possible. And with that, I wish you all an excellent evening and I thank Fabrice for joining us here and to speak. Nice evening to all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.